Hey guys, welcome back to Stepping Stone Farm. I'm Jade. So today, you can see it's a beautiful day outside. Um, not really much of an outside day, as it's been raining since about midnight. So I thought I would sit here and have a chat to you today. So today I'm going to talk about baleage and feeding baleage to horses specifically. So if that interests you, then stick around. So baleage is an increasingly popular winter feed. Uh, it's nutritious and most horses love it. However, there are some risks to feeding baleage and uh, I'll cover those later in this little episode. But um, what is baleage? Baleage, silage and haylage are names for the same basic product, ensiled grass. It doesn't matter whether the grass is going into a massive silage pit or a plastic wrapped bale, the process is the same. So the grass is baled when it's much greener than hay. Hay is typically baled with a moisture content of around 15%. Uh, ensiled grass or baleage is typically between 30% and 60% moisture with the most stable baleage usually made in the higher half of that range. The grass may only be cut for a day or even less before the balers arrive. It needs to be good quality grass with high sugar content. Coarse, stemmy grass will not only make inferior baleage, but it's also more likely to puncture the plastic wrap. Now, this is important. The plastic wrap is important. The grass is rowed up in preparation for baling, and the best moisture range for making it, like we've said, is between 30 to 60 percent, which may only take a day's wilting or even less. The contractor needs to produce a good, tight bale with as little air in the bale as possible. Loose bales are unlikely to make good baleage. So what happens once the plastic wrap goes on? So once it's on and the grass is sealed from the outside world, the ensiling process begins. So a combination of natural plant respiration and the action of aerobic bacteria begin to heat the bale as much as you would expect um, a compost heap to heat up. But aerobic bacteria needs air and oxygen and on a warm day a wrapped bale can be all out of oxygen in 30 minutes, stopping the aerobic bacteria from multiplying and growing and and making you um, making that feed not nutritious. However, if conditions are cooler or there is too much air in the bale, this process can take hours, sometimes even days. A well compacted bale may heat up as little as three degrees before it runs out of air. Grass baled when it's drier is likely to have more air trapped in it um, and therefore the heating process can take too long. If temperatures get up to 40 degrees or more, the grass will suffer heat damage, blacken and um, the proteins in the grass will not be as valuable or as readily available. They'll be ruined. So what's happening during this aerobic phase is the bacteria are turning um, the water soluble sugars in the grass into carbon dioxide and water with heat being the major byproduct. So the quicker this phase is over, the quicker the aerobic phase um, is over, the better because then all of the goodness stays in your feed. Now, once the aerobic heating phase ends and all the oxygen has gone out of the bale, uh, waiting in the wings is now the anaerobic bacteria. So anaerobic bacteria function without the need for oxygen. They multiply rapidly and they begin to actually ferment the grass, turning all the plant sugars into um, essentially acids, mainly lactic um, acid. As this continues, the bale becomes increasingly, increasingly acidic. So once your bale reaches a pH of anywhere between 3.6 to 5.0, the anaerobic bacteria, um, they basically find it too hard and the fermentation process grinds to a halt, it stops. The bale at this point has reached a stable state and it's ready to 
be stored for months until it's fed out. Um, all should remain pretty good um, and the bale should remain stable unless it's punctured and oxygen penetrates. So to wrap that part up, you basically want your bale to be wrapped quickly and be high in sugar and that will ensure that one, it runs out of oxygen so that the aerobic phase can finish quickly and the heating phase will end quickly and then you also want the sugars in the grass, you want nice young sugars uh, in the grass so that it's high so that the next um, anaerobic stage um, can also be over quite quickly. It's sort of a, a case of the longer your bales stay in this stage, um, the more likely you are to have um, difficulty with um, bacteria and ruined food basically. So you need to drive that fermentation and drop the pH level so it results in a stable feed that you can then store for months if not years on end. So basically all horse feeds have uh, their issues. Substandard hay can deliver dangerous molds and trigger hay colic. Um, moist grain can carry dangerous toxins and badly made baleage brings with it the risk of uh, botulism poisoning. So this is where um, when I started feeding out baleage or I started grazing with other horse owners um, I sort of ran into differences of opinion if you like um, they thought that the risk of botulism poisoning from feeding baleage was much higher than it than it actually is so although it's important to recognize the risk um, and how to minimize them um, horses are very susceptible to botulism botulism poisoning which usually does prove to be fatal it's um, horrible horrible disease uh, the poisoning results from the toxin produced in the baleage and there are seven known kinds each producing a slightly different toxin port from uh, Massey University here in New Zealand um, showed that there have actually been no recorded cases of botulism in any species in New Zealand uh, in at least the last 10 years so it is very very rare um, I have heard that it is far more common over in the US where they actually have an immunization um, for your horses against it but here in New Zealand it has not been a problem and that immunization in fact is not even available here feed related outbreaks of botulism have not only been linked to silage and baleage overseas but also big bale lucerne hay and chaff have also been a source. So this shows really that any spoiled feed, not just baleage, potentially carries a risk of botulism and should never be fed out. So provided the baleage is of high quality, evidence suggests that the risk to horses here in New Zealand, at least, um, is very low. Now just like any feed, um, it needs to be introduced to your horses gradually and you need to know what signs to look out for when you do start feeding out. And the main sign of course to watch for is a loose bowel movements. Now the best thing, um, and this happens can happen to any horse, um, if you start feeding out any type of different feed actually, um, you should always provide um, hay, a good source of dry readily available hay and this will help the horse manage its own um, intestines, its, mo its own digestion I guess would be the best word um, and they, horses are fantastic at managing their own digestion if they eat anything that they shouldn't have or they've got an upset tummy, hay is a fantastic um, answer to, to many issues. So, okay, so you're buying in your own baleage and you're not doing it yourself, so you don't even get to see the grass in the paddock when it's cut or before it's cut, so you have no idea the quality that you're getting. Um, one, either buy a bale or two and test it, get it tested, open it up, check it out for yourself, see what it's like before you commit to buying maybe your whole winter's supply. Um, three like 
yeah, buy from someone you trust and know. Uh, lots of um, lots of sellers. If you buy a certain amount of bales, if you're buying twenty or fifty or a hundred bales, if you get one or two straight away that are spoiled, um, you can ring them up and say, "Hey, I've you know I've opened three of these bales and they're completely spoiled. This isn't this isn't good. You know, what do you want to do?" Do you want to you know, give me some replacements or do you want to take these back? But obviously, like I said, if you buy just a couple to start with and check, you'll be, I think, far happier with um, your own quality check before you go and invest in 20 or 50 bales, however many you need for your season. Um, and also ask, like most major suppliers get their products tested and um, if they have, then you can ask to see those results. Hey, well, what were the results? How do they look? So, um, what? Oh, what do you need to test it? So, um, you only need about two cups, so about five hundred grams or half a kg. Um, and you got to try and get. <laughs> it's hard, but you got to try and get into the center of that bale, um, and you can courier it in a sealed bag to a variety of labs for analysis. Um, including Massey University here in New Zealand. So horse owners otherwise risk, yeah, otherwise otherwise you run the risk of paying too much for bad feed or f worse feed that you can't even feed out. You know, um, like I said, buy a bale to do a sample, open it up, get it tested, and then buy your feed for the entire year. Now, I said this earlier, one of the downsides to feeding out baleage is... The smell, if you don't like it, I absolutely love the smell of baleage. I don't know why it reminds me of, you know, being on the farm as a kid and feeding out baleage to all the cattle and, and memories with my parents and, and all sorts of triggers. But my husband cannot stand the smell of baleage. So it's a great idea to have um, a separate set of gloves, a separate set of clothing, so that when you do feed it out or after you've fed out, you can just quickly change and leave most of the smell behind you. Um, it's hard to not come to the conclusion that uh, baleage, feeding out baleage here in New Zealand is a very safe uh, option. Um, all this will provide considerable, or I hope it provides considerable comfort to horse owners feeding baleage um, that Although horses are more susceptible to botulism than cattle, uh, you can keep your eyes and your nose uh, tuned in when you're feeding out and um, really keep those risks to your horses super, super low. Okay guys, so that is all I have for you today. I hope um, you've learned something about baleage and haylage and silage and you hopefully feel more comfortable about feeding it out to your horses and what to look out for um, and also the process of how it's baled. Uh, if you've got any questions or you have any suggestions or any of that good stuff and things, be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Um, if you want to see uh, bales, our bales getting baled, um, yeah, jump on onto my channel and, and find our last baleage video, which is the video before this. All right, I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to um, taking you back out on the farm when the weather's a bit nicer. Okay, bye for now.